Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. This week we read Parsha Vayetze, and this is a parasha in which Yaakov Avinu, our father, he goes down to look for a wife. He leaves his parents' home and he goes to look for a wife. And uh, we know that he is the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel. So when a uh, Rahel's uh, maidservant Bilha had her youngest child, Rahel Imenu, she merited to call him Naftali. Naftali expre expresses her feeling of, um, of accomplishment because she, uh, by this time she was unable to have children. She hadn't had yet her own children. So she gave the maidservant to, to her husband, Yaakov, wishing that through her she could become a mother, and she was the one that named this, this child. So it explains that the name Naftali means to be sto stubborn. It says in the Pasuk, I was stubborn, I was stubborn. And this taking about her struggle, she was talking about her struggles regarding her sister Leah, who had been very fertile and had had a, almost all half of the of the tribes. So Naftali really means that name means connection connection through struggle to be able to connect to God through, through struggle. And Rabbi Yerusham explained in that Torah, he explained that when we make a commitment to, to, to accomplish or achieve something to get somewhere, we often find ourselves stumbling somewhere close to the beginning. When we want to accomplish something in life, it's not easy, it doesn't come easy. It comes hard to everybody at their own level. We are always uh, going over stepping stones. We always have a little stone in our, in our shoe. We always have something that doesn't allow us to get to our, um, to our dream easily. So it says here, we don't always manage to realize whatever it was that we wish to accomplish. Like you see many people, they begin new projects, they have new ideas, they're so excited, they start their new project, but they start and they never finish. So it says here that at times there's these, um, these hydrances or stumbling blocks that are put in our way, that Hashem always puts them there. They come because it's part of the, of the struggle to be able to merit where we want to be. Uh, nothing comes for free. You know, I was thinking, I saw a friend of mine send me a beautiful Devar Torah this week. I don't remember who wrote it, but he said that the problem with this generation, today's generation, is that we have everything very easy. Today, people, they, we have it in the app, Instacart, eh, Amazon, anything you need. You just go in your phone. You don't even have to go to your computer. You have it there in your hand and you just order whatever you need and tomorrow it's in your doorstep. And so people lose this feeling of having to earn it, having to go and look for it. In, in the, 10 years ago or a year ago, this was unheard of. You needed something, you had to get in your car, drive to the store, or take a bus, or take the subway, or take whatever me tra uh, traveling medium you needed to get to the store, to find that they didn't have it there. Then you had to go to another store and another store till you could find what you needed. People had to hustle to get to where they wanted to get, to get to what they needed in their life. But today, life is easy in this sense. It became very easy. And because of this, people have lost that inner strength of fighting for what they want, of, of, of uh, doing the work they have to do, self-sacrificing what they need to self-sacrifice to be able to achieve their dreams. So what it says here is that uh, Rabbi Yerusham explains that the different hydrants and stumbling blocks eh, endlessly threaten to interfere with our mission and our goals. And so how did our forefathers and our foremothers were able to fight obstacles? They, you know, we read the Torah and we read the only, eh, the only 
uh, foremother that was uh, had fertility in her was Leah actually but if you read Sarah she couldn't have a child till she was over 90 years old and, and, and Rivka had to pray 20 years to have her children and we see Le uh, uh, Rahel the same thing they had to try to to fight for it, to pray for it, to do whatever they needed to do, connect to Hashem in a bigger way to be able to have their kids. We see it in the Torah. People didn't get things just that easy. So ask Rabbi Yerusham if, it, if this is the way it is by us, like it's it, how did the, 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 the Avot, the, the forefathers, and the Imahos, our foremothers, who were the, the Gedolei of Israel, the greatest of Israel, how were they married? What did they do that they merited to become so great? What did they do that made them such great people? So says Rabbi Yerusham, they definitely suffered from hindrances and obstacles. It's not that they had an easy way. They for sure had to fight for what they wanted, uh, just like we do. They had as many, if not more, uh, and nevertheless, they were, they had, they had the sehut, they had the merit to be able to become such great people. So this is to this, Rabbi Yerusham answers that the, the Torah, that the emet, the truth of the Torah, is the persistent uh, that they were persistent in what they wanted to achieve. They never let go of it. They were always fighting for it. They were persistent and they wouldn't let it uh, just be. And by overcoming all these, um, these obstacles that were put in front of them, they, they merited becoming such great people. So it's the obstacles that make us the great, brings out the best in us. You know, I always call life's challenges. I don't like the word challenges. I like the word uh, opportunities, opportunities of growth. All these hydrances, obstacles, uh, uh, stepping stones we have in front of us, all these things that block our way, that block our vision, that don't allow us to be where we want to be, in reality are just there to bring us merit, to give us sehut, to give to make us greater people. So it is not despite the, the obstacles, it's not as if they didn't have the obstacles, it's because of the obstacles, precisely because of the obstacles, that they became such great people. This is what made them great. Great people don't just happen. Great people don't just happen. You don't see a person that is amazing it just because he was born like that. It just doesn't is that way. Great people become great people through their obstacles in life. So with complete trust, uh, to, they, became, uh, they, they became who they needed to become. So if you make a decision in your life, if you make a choice that you want something very badly, you want to, to let's talk spiritually, you want to be more connected to Hashem, you want to, to be closer to God, you want to start eating kosher, for example. So when a person begins his spiritual journey towards God, it's not so easy. It become, it, it, there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be a lot of obstacles in your life. That maybe the family is not happy about it. They're going to make it hard for you. Maybe you're not going to be so... You're going to work in a certain place where to have access to kosher food is not going to be easy for you. There's many different obstacles that come your way. Uh, but at the end of the day, Rabbi Yeruham concludes that that the whole strength of the avos of the forefathers and the foremothers in the, in the challenges, in all the different stumbling blocks that stood between them and what they wished to achieve, precisely that's what determined, that is the determination, the 100% commitment that they felt. So the harder it got for them, the more committed they were to their cause. The more they fought for it, the more they prayed for it, the more they connected to Hashem. And that's what allowed them to realize their goals. So people sometimes think, like if I stay away from God, you know it's going to be easier for me. Maybe in a certain way it will be. But 
the determination is what allows us to be connected to God. This is where we go. And so we see here that the Jewish people are known as a stubborn people. In the Torah, we're described as stubborn people. And it's not a bad connotation because sometimes we think stubbornness is not a good quality. It's not a good midot. It's not a good character trait. We have to be able to yield a little bit. But in, a, in, 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 in spirituality, in spiritual matters, stubbornness is a high-fi quality. You have to have it. If you don't have stubbornness, then you're not going to be able to achieve what you need to achieve. So um, we learn here that when you choose to go with stubbornness, when you're committed to accomplishing something, you'll find different stumbling, stumbling blocks between you and your destination. What you have to do is go you have to go and take the path of determination. You have to be determined. I find that people who are highly successful in their lives in spiritual matters or in material matters is because they are determined. They don't allow themselves to fall down. You know, you read stories of all these great uh, businessmen uh, and you hear how they began and it was not easy for them. They wouldn't uh, hire them here. They threw them out of here. They, they, were, they had to drop off college. They had to, they, their story is not a success story that just happened. It come, it's years and years and years of trying here, of trying there, of getting here, of doing, but always persisting, always going, never stopping, always trying, not letting life um, walk over them. So if it's not as straightforward, as smooth as I want it to be, it does not mean I have to give up. Some people think, oh, you know what? This is not going the way I think it should be going. Maybe God is sending me a message that I should go on a different route. I should just give it up. This is not for me. I'm not getting where I need to go. But we have to see that sometimes life does demand us to have that path of commitment, that path of determination, of not letting ourselves just let it be it. And to circumvent, circumvent the challenges, to find a different and even crooked round route. We see people that get far away in life, they don't have it easy. They have to go through here, through there. Maybe they have to go straight. Sometimes they have to go backwards and take 10 steps back and start all over again to continue. We learned this in the Torah when the Jewish people were journeying, the 42 journeys to go to the land of Israel. And sometimes they were in one place and they had to go back to another place and then they had to go back to this place to be able to go to a different place. Life is a journey. So when we refer back to our society and the atmosphere in which we live, the world in which our children grow up, this world that we're living it right now, we find that we all set out to reach different goals in, in Ruchnios and in Gashmios, in spiritual matters and in material matters. And we can file a full encyclopedia of all the beautiful beginnings, all the beautiful undertakings and all the beautiful vo voyages that we've embarked on. But very few people have actually been able to actualize their dreams and come to their destination. We see people just give up. And so it is not that we have no, no more, no more uh, uh, the want to be able to achieve, uh, is that our sense of commitment is weaker. Our sense of commitment today is not as strong as the sense of commitment of our grandparents, let's say, or our forefathers. Like I remember my grandparents, they came from Europe, from Syria, with the clothes they had on, no language, no friends, no family, no money, no nothing. And they started from zero in, in countries that were so foreign to them, like Colombia, so different from what they knew. And nevertheless, they were able to bring up families, they were able to build communities, Jewish schools, uh, Jewish life. And this came from that strength, from that commitment that they didn't let go. They just had to do what they had to do and they did it 
with their heart, with, ev with everything they had. So Rabbi Benjamin e Eisenberger in his book Likras Shabbat, he, he explains to us, it's not that we had more uh, struggles, more uh, difficulties today than our forefathers had, it's just that we are weaker people. We are weaker people. And that's not a commitment, that's just, I would like for this to happen, it would be nice if it happens. Like people are like more comfortable, like it's nice if it happens, but if it doesn't happen, okay, I'm okay with it. But you need to be uh, persistent, you need to be stubborn in life, you cannot let go of your dreams and of what you envision yourself. So a commitment necessitates uh, needs that you have this strength, that you have this desire, this self-sacrifice, this commitment, this tremendous, tremendous level of commitment. And the commitment is weak because because we're, we're so quick to dispose, so quick to give up on anything and everything and even something that's so dear to us. You know, we live in the, in the, in the era of disposables, of instant gratification, of having everything in your doorstop the next day, 24 hour rush service. We're used to this and this is amazing. I'm not saying it's not, I love it. I'm like, I maximize my time to the, to the, to the maximum on a day because before to go and do um, grocery shopping, it took me almost two hours between I got in the car, got to the supermarket, did my shopping, put everything in the car, came back home. It was two, an hour and a half, two hours today. At 10 o'clock at night, I go on my app, I go to the Instacart, I ask for everything I need, I put please deliver at nine o'clock in the morning, nine sharp, the, the, the Instacart is in my, in my house. So yes, this is unbelievable if you're gonna use it to maximize, to optimize your time in your life. To use your time for the things that you need to work on and to achieve what you want to achieve. But if this is gonna make you a lazy person and it's gonna make you a complacent person and it's gonna make you a laid back person and someone that just everything falls on their knees, then it's, a, it's not gonna be good for you. So we see here that the flip side of it says, um, tells us, the, the Das Sekeinim tells us that Rahel suffering in her childness while her sister Leah was having a baby after a baby brought her to a breaking point. It came to a point where she, she was not gonna be able to live any longer. And so only an extraordinary amount of strength enabled her to bear her pain. We see that she was the strongest of our, of our, of our foremothers, Rahel. This is why people stopping her, covering her, resting place in Bethlehem and they stop and they cry and they cry because she has the strength to contain all the tears of all the Jewish people. She was buried in a place where she knew that the Jewish people were gonna be exiled and when they were gonna be going out of Jerusalem, they would stop there and she would comfort them. So we see that she has a, an incredible strength and the Das Sekenim interprets the Pasuk, I have suffered greatly regarding my sister and I gather my strength to endure and I succeeded to endure up, up until now. And the Torah explains, says that Rahel was jealous of her sister. And Rashi explains, it was not a bad jealousy. It was not that she was jealous, envious that she wanted her sister not to have those children or that husband. This is not the case of Rahel. She gave her sister the simanim on the, her wedding night, these this, this words that she had, this uh, clue, the, the, the clue to get married because she knew that the father was gonna trick Yaakov. They had put these words so they would know that he was gonna marry uh, Rahel. And Rahel couldn't envision her sister being humiliated in front of everybody, not knowing this and be put in the spot. So she gave it to the, her, she gave her husband to her. So if there's a person that is giving is Rahel Imenu. But the jealousy that she felt was that she wanted also to be meritorious, to be one of the mothers of the, the tribes of Israel. She, this is what she wanted. She wanted to be 
in the level of her sister. It's not that she didn't want her sister to what, what she had, but she wanted to merit to be like her sister. It's like in the, in the Pirkei Avot, it says jealousy is something horrible. It's something that we have to take away from ourselves. We cannot feel jealousy or envy towards a person. Only we can feel jealousy towards a person that is very learned and we want to be like them. So this is the jealousy that Rahel experienced. She wanted to be like her sister. She wanted to have that spiritual uh, stance uh, as one of the four mothers of the 12 tribes of Israel. This is what she wanted. So Rahel desires so that she would increase her, her merit and also have children. And this was constructive jealousy, uh, a competitive feeling that demands increased uh, work on herself. So it was not a desire for the envied person to, to, to lose whatever they had, but rather that the, env the, the, the envy of the less fortunate person should also have the sehut to possess the sehut of the fortunate. She only wanted to have the merit to be able to have the fortune that her sister had. So, so it says here, one of the many tactics of the Yetzer Hara, of the evil inclination, is the strategy of switching sides. If he cannot get you from the front, he's gonna get you from the back. Instead of putting stumbling blocks be, be in front of you, eh, instead of preventing us, the Yetzer Hara, he changes uniforms and suddenly he becomes this very religious Yetzer Hara. I talk about it in the Hovos Halevavot, very religious Yetzer Hara. And then he starts putting the stumbling blocks in your back. He starts making you feel like uh, unworthy of being able to achieve this, unworthy that you're not worthy enough, that you're not in the level of your sister and you shouldn't, uh, it, it, make, it makes you go back. So there is a fine line between commitment and pushing yourself past your healthy limits. So this Yetzer Hara will tell you, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, you're, you're, you forget it, forget about it. You will never achieve this, you're not good enough. So the Hovet Saim explains that usually the Satan, the Yetzer Hara, is in front of us blocking our path, not allowing us to get to our success. But when he fails, he, he, he be, because we've made our strong commitment, as we've explained before, we are very determined, stubborn, and committed, then he comes from behind and he, us and pushes. And he tells us, go faster, work harder on yourself, make yourself a better person, you have to grow, you have to improve, you have to be better, you're not good enough. And so we see here that that this is something that can break a person in two. And even Rahul, according to the Das Sekenim, could have been driven too far in her use of this um, quality. So the pain and the dissatisfaction that she was using to motivate herself to be meritorious, to reach the level of Leah, could have pushed her to the point of, uh, of brokenness. She could have become a broken person. So on the one hand, we have to learn balance. Balance is the key word here. Actually, Yaakov represents balance. It's tiferet, it's harmony, it's beauty. And we have to learn that on one hand, we must be motivated to set our goals. We have to be motivated to have the commitment to pursue them, the strength, the stubbornness, the, the go, go, go. Uh, and, but on the other hand, we must make sure that the Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination, is be, doesn't push us to the limit, doesn't push us so intensely that we will break down and we will not be able not only to achieve the dream we have, to achieve what we want, but we will end up not achieving anything at all. So we see here that, um, that the Musar Haskel teaches us that the message is that there are two sides of the coin. On the one hand, we must be constantly committed, feel motivated, elevate the bar and aim to reach it. We have to know that we have an incredible potential and we should always be growing and, 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 and looking for that part of us that is even greater. Tomorrow, we're, we should be better than today. This is the way we should live. But at the same time, we have to be careful that we don't 
come to a point where we break down and we desperation just finishes off. And we see this with the children when we're raising up our kids. Sometimes parents expect from their children more than what they can give them at that time, at that moment. And it's good to push a child to their limit. You have to know to when that child can give you. But sometimes we have to learn to stop and to let them be where they are and eventually let them grow. Because at the, at the same time that you're helping them grow and expand themselves and, and reach their potentials, if we do it uh, to a point where the kid cannot come to do what you're expecting, you can create brokenness, which prevents them uh, from reaching even a standard that they could have be reaching. So it's gonna bring them completely down. And uh, Rabbi Eisenberger finishes here. He says, we know that Rachel is the one who is, um, who cries for us, she cries for us. And if this was Rahul's special and beautiful balance, being driven and committed and not overly intense, then of course, she'll daven for us and for our children that we should be meritorious to set our goals, to be motivated to reach our goals, but yet not to overdo it, not to allow the, the Yetzirah to push us from behind. We have to be careful. We have to listen, listen very carefully to see who is really talking to us. Is it really our essence, our, our godliness shaman that is pushing us, that is allowing us to grow and be the best we can be? or it's something negative behind us that is trying to pull us down. So I want to wish you a blessed week. Remember to never give up. Keep fighting for what you really feel is important for you, especially in your connection to Hashem. Never give up. But at the same time, give yourself the space to be able to get to where you have to go in the right time and at the right moment. I remember when I was uh, becoming more observant of the Torah. Sometimes it became very overwhelming. You cannot take everything at once. And I tell this to people who are growing. I tell them, don't become a person that is religious from one day to the next. Start with one mitzvah, start with one mitzvah. Do it, get comfortable with it. Once you're comfortable in it, take another mitzvah, get uncomfortable and start fighting for the other one. But if you take everything in, then one day you're going to say, well, I'm not able to do this. It's too much for me. And you'll just drop everything back and not do anything. So it's a balance. Remember, life is a balance. Your priorities, what's important, the most important thing is that you're healthy in your mind, in your, in your heart, and in your body. And that's what's important. So take care of yourselves and remember, live a little higher. Thank you.